Majority Leader Winkler, thanks for joining us this morning. Happy to be here. So you and I are speaking a week before the 2022 legislative session is set to begin. What can we expect House DFLers to focus on this year? We are going to focus on the same things we've been focusing throughout the pandemic. We need to make sure that families have basic economic security, that workers are being paid well on the job and have access to paid leave. And we want to make sure that small businesses have uh, the resources they need to come through this pandemic and be stronger on the other side. We will also have a focus on public safety and making sure that rising crime is addressed in a manner that uh, not only uh, helps keep people safe, but also continues the reforms of a criminal justice system uh, that has a lot of deep inequities built into it. So we have a big agenda in front of us. We have to pass a bonding bill. We have to uh, deal with a $7.8 billion surplus. But our priorities are going to be the people of Minnesota and communities all across Minnesota. Yeah, that was my next question. The this kind of the elephant in the room here at the beginning of the uh, start of session, projected $7.7, $7.8 billion surplus. You said after that that there is a generational opportunity to make Minnesota's economy work better for every Minnesotan. How would that be accomplished? First and foremost, we see right now that parents have a hard time taking care of kids when they're out of school. We see parents having to quarantine and miss work. We see a system where people don't have access to uh, earn sick leave or they don't have access to paid family and medical leave. The very people we are saying are most essential to keep our economy going and to keep our lives uh, going ahead are the people who are paid the least, have the least access to uh, basic job benefits like those, and we need to step up and make a difference by providing those benefits at a state level. We've tried over and over and over to do that on the DFL side, and I hope this year Republicans are more open to it than they have been before. Affordable child care is also a huge part of that. Families can't go to work if their kids don't have a place to go that is safe, that is going to help them develop, that is going to be uh, a good place for their kids to thrive and grow. And affordable child care that's high quality is also essential for our state's economic future. And some of your colleagues on the other side of the aisle, they would say, well, this much projected money uh, in the coffers, why not make some tax cuts? Well, the problem with tax cuts is that they tend to go to the people who already have a lot of money, especially when Republicans are the ones pushing them. We don't need big corporations who are having record-breaking years like United Health Group getting a tax cut. We don't need very rich people getting a tax cut. And a tax cut for low-income people uh, can be beneficial, and we provide services, uh, we provide a, uh, benefits in the tax code uh, like that. Uh, but that doesn't help create a child care system. It doesn't help get access to paid family and medical leave. It doesn't help uh, to make um, health care more affordable. Those kinds of bread and butter issues are the only, have to be solved together by all of us in Minnesota contributing and being part of it. So that's why we don't favor tax cuts because we know who benefits, we know who loses, and we do not very much uh, for working Minnesotans when we pursue that kind of Republican policy. And Governor Walls called for a $2.7 billion capital investment package. Is that in line with House DFLers thinking? And if so, what are the chances that realistically that the Senate would agree to something or a bill that big? We passed the largest public works bill in state history in October of 2020, right before a general election in the middle of the pandemic. And I think that we can do the same again. Uh, we have big infrastructure needs across the state. We need roads, bridges. We have broadband needs. We have clean water needs. Uh, we have communities that need to invest in uh, better infrastructure for community growth, like fire stations and make sure that their communities are ready to be safe and, and thriving. So we have huge uh, infrastructure needs in Minnesota. We have the ability to invest this way, and we should do it. And frontline worker pay, it, are we closer to a deal on that? And I guess just can you recap the House DFL stance on frontline worker pay and when maybe an agreement would, would, be, would happen? We have a $250 million agreement from the last budget to put money into the hands of frontline workers, the people who were on the front lines during the pandemic. We think that should go to all the people who had to report to work, work in person with others, and put themselves at risk. Uh, I think that uh, that would amount to a relatively small payment to a large number of people. That is why we actually think a billion dollars, uh, which is similar to what the governor proposed, is more in line with what workers need. It would allow us to provide a $1,500 payment to a, a wide swath of workers. Uh, I think Republicans uh, need to come to the table on the $250 million. They already agreed to it, and frontline workers are waiting. And considering that they have uh, billions of dollars of requests and tax cuts, it seems to me we should at least make sure that workers are getting a decent payment when they put themselves at risk. 
And uh, DFL, with the DFL controlling the House, Republicans controlling the Senate, it's in an election year. I've seen a fair number of social media posts that some people don't think much is going to get done this year. How would you react or how do you respond to those, those uh, type of comments? I think that's up to the legislators. I think that if you look at past history, the election cycle tends to be driven by national events and individual campaigns are, are won and lost by the hard work of individual members of the House. I think that the politics of the legislative session usually doesn't have much of an impact on how voters are thinking in November. So based on that, we in the House strongly believe that we should do the work now. We should govern now. We should get the work done on behalf of the people and leave the politics to the campaign cycle. They don't have much to do with any, each other anyway, so we might as well do a good job while we're here. And that's what we are going to be pushing hard to accomplish this session. And finally, I understand you're a hockey dad. Yes. Um, Will the 2022 session end in regulation or are we going to go into overtime? I think we'll end in regulation. If we can't get a deal done by the end of the regular session, I don't see how a special session is going to make it easier for us to reach an agreement. Past years, we've had a budget um, uh, shutdown that, or a state government shutdown that would hold us back if we didn't pass it. This year, state government won't shut down if we don't pass a supplemental budget. So I think the pressure has to be the end of this session to get something done and it'll be harder and harder afterwards.